Dodgers were just in Tampa this past weekend. That was as weird and fun of a series as like we've had in Major League Baseball right now. I yeah. I don't know. It's almost like you watch those three games and then you you know like scoot back in your seat and you're like, what just happened here? Yeah. What were your overall takeaways from that weekend? Yeah, today was a today was a wild game for sure. I watched a lot of that game and. I don't it know. Was, there's something. Game was there's, on something crack. Like, <laughs> there's something about that dome and that park, and I, I don't know, man. And you know, we we kind of saw it in the World Series in 20, right, where they mix and match and pieces and parts, and um, that's just kind of how they operate. And um, you know, we don't do it exactly like that, but we do a little bit of that too, right? So things just got kind of wacky and weird down there in Tampa, and and I think that's kind of par for the course when we play them. Man, I, I had Kershaw and Glasnow circled on my calendar as soon as I saw that that was the probable pitching matchup. What did you see from Clayton against the best offense in baseball at this point? I was looking on Saturday night. Texas was the second best team OPS in the league at 793. Tampa was 845. Like that is so far and away the best offense in baseball. What did you see from Kershaw on that one? And then what did you see from Glasnow in his first game back? Yeah, I mean, both of them obviously – you know, pretty established guys in, in the league. And, you know, I think that Tampa offense is weird because they kind of, they attack you in a lot of different ways. It, it's very odd. I saw something, it's been since like 1955 that a team has led the league in homers and stolen bases and, and they lead the league in both right now, which is just very weird. Um, you know, they do a really good job of finding guys that can OPS, it, meaning not everyone's hitting 300, not everyone's hitting homers, but they have a lot of guys that are OPSing and, um, you know, we have a, we have a, a lot of guys like that. Uh, Max Muncy is probably our greatest example of the non batting average OPS guy. Um, mm -hmm. they have a lot of guys that just take really good at bats and, and with Clayton, if you're undisciplined, he's going to run through you. And, and if you're disciplined, you might have a chance and, and, you know, they're a disciplined team. And so, um, you know, our offense kept us in that game and, and won it for us at the end, but. You know, you see it in all three games. They just take really good at bats. They they know where they're trying to hit the ball, where they're trying to hit it hard, you know, the zones they're looking in, and, and then they're disciplined in, in taking certain pitches. So, uh, yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool series. When you're watching these games, because we talked about it a little bit in the, in the other episodes about, like, you know, how you're playing this role almost as, like, a fan and how that's been fun for you. But I, I have to imagine now you talk about September as the target, like you're hoping to pitch this year. How much are you watching and saying, like, kind of almost gathering some information now as you're watching some of these teams that you know you're going to face? Maybe the Rays, that might not be till the World Series, but you know, some of the interdivision games, some of the games against teams that you know you're going to see when you when you come back. How do you how do you balance that that side of things? Because there is that angle of like just being a fan and tweeting and having fun with the Yeezys, right. but also it's like you're watching how your teammates are attacking these guys, and hopefully you'll be attacking these guys this right. year too. Yeah, I, I think for me it's a little bit less so just where I'm not on the mound. It's hard for me to say, like, oh, I can do X, Y, and Z. Um, I, I think I'm still kind of in fan mode. I, I think once there's a catcher down and I'm trying to throw certain pitches and stuff like that, I can get a little bit yeah more yeah. back into it. But, um, no, it is, it's interesting. And, and, you know, it's been a long time since I've gotten to watch this much baseball, not from a side view, not in the, you know, in the dugout. So, yeah. Um, it's interesting. And, and I think it's going to go, you know, leads into kind of what we're talking about at the end of this with the sliders and stuff and all the new stuff that people are doing, how prevalent certain pitches have become. And um, that's kind of been the biggest takeaway is how many guys are doing um, kind of certain things, right? It's almost like more guys are doing the same thing over and over. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah. Last thing on this Dodgers Rays series Sunday was like the perfect example of a great lineup picking up a rough start from a young starter, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, they they jump ahead early. That game was just nuts on Sunday yeah. morning. But this offense, like, I, I don't want to have you set a ceiling on the offense, but can they be the best offense in the National League? Obviously, you know, you point to Atlanta and say they're awesome and they're deep. Yeah. Got to look at Dodgers like this too, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we have a pretty cool. Uh, mix. Atlanta is extremely deep, and obviously their top couple guys are really, really, really talented. Um, I think we're kind of situated in between Atlanta and San Diego, where our, we think our big three are as good as anyone, and we're pretty deep. 
where Atlanta is extremely deep and San Diego seemingly right now is really, really top heavy, but their top three guys are unbelievable as well. Top four, whoever, however you want to rank it. Right. But with Mookie, Freddie, Will Smith, the way he's playing it's, and Muncie, it's really hard to say that anybody has more talent. Uh, JD Martinez, obviously, since he's gotten back from the DL has, um, has been unbelievable. So, uh, you know, we have, we just have a lot of players and, and a lot of really good talented guys. And, when when we put at bats together on guys, it's pretty we're pretty difficult to navigate. So yeah. yeah, I think it's pretty pretty easy to dream on the the fact that we could be the best offense in the National League and, and even the big leagues, I think. Um but we'll see. I mean it's a long season and you go in runs and obviously I guess Tampa right now is on that kind of run where they're offensively all clicking. I mean the the craziest thing I've seen is like seven of their guys are like OPSing 200 points over than their career average. Like it, you know, you'll see a guy or two every year on a team have a great year. Right. But to have seven guys having the best year of their career, um, uh, not to take any credit away from the, it's just hard to see that like sustaining, but also it's, it's incredible that they, they accomplished that even yeah. for two months. Right. Like it's, it's such a weird, it, it's kind of so, um, abnormal that it's hard to like say if it's great or if it's scary or awesome or you know you don't know it's just classic rays i feel like too it's like if, if you told me before the year what's the one team that's gonna have seven guys have ops 200 points above their their career average i think i would have said yeah. rays one and then maybe dodgers two but it's impossible to say dodgers because right. i mean freddie freeman's opsing 1100 so right. the last question i have for you is you talk about the Rays kind of exceeding expectations, even though expectations are perpetually pretty high for them. And and I know you're watching more baseball than ever. Before we dive into you know breaking do breaking down some of these arsenals, what's a team that's maybe stood out to you a little bit more than you would have expected? Like, is there a team out there that now that you're watching you know a lot more on television and you you watch from a different angle as we've talked about in the past? Is there a team that stood out to you that's just like wow? they can play a little bit better than I thought they would this year. And that might be on your radar a bit more. Yeah. I'll give you two for two different reasons. I think Arizona is doing a good job yeah. um, putting together kind of a core there. I think, you know, a few years ago they went and signed Bumgarner and Grinky. They had done these things trying to make some splashes and um, didn't quite work the way they wanted to. And, and I think they kind of pivoted and um, obviously are drafting. Well, they, they probably um, they're, they're drafting like a very certain kind of player. Yeah. And it seems to be working out for them. And, you know, they're signing these guys and, um, you know, they're just playing good baseball. And obviously Gallon has kind of become a different level than he was maybe two or three years ago. Um, so I think they're they're doing a good job over there. I don't know if their record is going to reflect it in, in all of that stuff as 162, 162 goes by. But um, I think they're doing a really good job there. And then Texas, I think – it's really interesting in Texas because offensively they've kind of had the same pieces and parts last year and this year, but offensively it, it seemingly is coming, coming together now, which is really weird because they went out and signed all this pitching, but now the offense is doing really yeah. well. So um, obviously with DeGrom heard and kind of on the mend, I guess, and, and watching Evaldi has been really, really cool, especially, you know, he's probably the, the prototype now for guys with two Tommy Johns and, and a guy that reached out to me when I got surgery again. So, oh, that's so cool. Um, you know, somehow rooting for him, even though he's on a different team. But um, no, it's it. Those are probably the two that I think are probably. I, I don't want to say overachieving because that's not that's not the phrase. It that are, you know, doing things well and and kind of you can make sense of what they're doing. Also, Baltimore is playing really well. I, I don't know. I think a lot of people thought they were a year or two away and, and I don't think anyone, um, I think everyone thinks they're doing a good job, right? Like they got Rutschman Absolutely. and they've got these young players that are playing really well, but I, I don't think anyone thought it would be happening this quickly. Right. I, Jack, I love that he mentioned the, the Rangers because we were just talking about how we're going to talk about them on the outro. Cause it's like, they're doing this without DeGrom and, and the right. team just looks like it's coming together. Nathaniel Lowe comes out and says, we're the team to beat in the division, which is, you know, I, I love that energy. It's well, fun. they're they're paying six starters right now, right? Really paying six starting pitchers, which is something that you just don't really normally do. And so, it, it's just it's wild to me that they're doing that. And then their offense is the thing that's kind of carrying. If you don't have Degrom, you know, it's hard to say that your staff is carrying you. 
Yeah, that's 100%. <laughs>